Okay, so this is a quick tutorial on the radius and ulna bones of the forearm. So the radius bone is this bone here and it lies laterally in the anatomical position. The ulna is this bone which lies medially in the forearm. And these two bones articulate um, distally and proximally with each other. And proximally they also articulate with the humerus. So at the humerus they articulate with the um, condyle, so the ulna articulates with the trochlea and the radius articulates with the capitulum. So it's not that clear on this model here, but I'll switch over to another diagram and show you uh, the articular surface of the distal humerus. So we're looking at an anterior view of the left humerus and you can see this articular uh, surface here. So this is the condyle of the humerus and you've got the trochlea which articulates with the ulna bone and the capitulum which articulates with the radius. So the elbow joint is a hinge synovial joint uh, so you only get flexion and extension at this joint. So the radius bone is this bone here, this lateral bone in the forearm. So I'll just highlight it. So on the radius you've got this bit here which is called the head and just inferior to that you've got the neck so I'll just zoom in a bit so this round bit at the top you've got is called the head inferior to that you've got the neck and then you've got this um, tuberosity here so this is called the radial tuberosity where the biceps inserts and then you've got the shaft of the radius and right at the end the distal end you've got this um, little tubercle, the styloid tubercle, the styloid process of the radius. So I mentioned before um, two other joints that you have in the forearm. You've got these radio ulna joints, you've got a proximal radio ulna joint and a distal radio ulna joint and this is where you get pronation and supination of the forearm. So at this proximal radio ulna joint the radial head articulates with the ulna at a little notch on the ulna called the um, radial notch and here you, the radius spins around so you get pronation and supination and then you've got the same sort of thing distally at the distal radio ulna joint and here you've got the ulna head and the ulna head articulates with the ulna notch on the radius so you get pronation and supination here so just just again you've got the radial head which articulates with the ulna at the radial notch on the ulna and distally you've got the ulna head articulating with the ulna notch on the radius and these joints give you pronation and supination in the forearm just a quick point on this model the radial tuberosity which is shown here is this little bump is shown slightly more laterally than it is in life so it's a bit more medial and anterior on, on the radius than it's shown in this diagram, this model. So another thing to note is that at this proximal radio ulna joint you've got a ligament um, called the annular ligament. So I'm just showing you um, a diagram of this. So you can see this annular ligament. We're looking at a posterior view here of the left left arm, so the olecranon process on the ulna, um, at the ulna bone medial, the radius lateral. So you've got this annular ligament at the proximal radio ulna joint which surrounds, goes around the head of the radius. So what this does is it stabilizes the joint and it allows the radius to rotate um, against the um, radial notch on the ulna and also on the capitulum on the humerus. So this annular ligament actually blends with the fibrous membrane of the joint capsule and it's called annular because annulus in Latin means ring so it forms like a ring around the head of the radius. So sometimes the radius can actually get forced out of this annular ligament so you get radial head subluxation and this is called nursemaid's elbow because um, if you forcefully pull on the arm of a young child as a nursemaid might do 
you can sublux the radius from this ligament so it will slip out from the annular ligament and this is more common in young children under the age of five so moving on to the ulna bone um, this bone articulates with the chocula at the humerus and also it's got its proximal and distal articulations with the radius so just rotating around posteriorly you can see the olecranon so this is that posterior protuberance on the ulna the olecranon process and like I mentioned before you've got this articulation with the radial head so there's a notch here on the ulna called the radial notch which articulates with the head of the radius and likewise at the distal articulation you've got the ulna notch on the radius so you've got the olecranon, the radial notch and you've got the trochlear process which is this um, this trochlear notch sorry, which is this hollowing which articulates with the trochlear of the humerus you've also got um, the coronoid process which I'll show you on another diagram so again here looking at the uh, left side of the body so the ante an anterior view of the left radius and ulna so you've got the um, trochlear notch and you've got this coronoid process here the lecranon up here the radial notch laterally which articulates with the head of the radius then you've got the shaft and the ulna head so the head of the ulna is at the opposite side of the head of the radius so you've got the head of the radius proximally and the head of the ulna is distal so the head of the radius articulates with the radial notch on the ulna head of the ulna articulates with the ulna notch on the radius and you've also got this little styloid process medially so just like you've got the styloid process on the radius you've got the styloid process of the ulna so just looking here at a, an image I stole from Wikipedia um, you've got the coronoid process you've got the radial notch on the ulna articulating with the radial head so you can see this more clearly than the 3D model there's this clear facet for articulation with the um, radial head and then you've got the trochlear notch which articulates with the trochlear of the humerus and the olecranon process which forms that bit which sticks out at the elbow so looking at the radial uh, the, the radius just a real life image so you've got the radial tuberosity you've got the radial neck and this head here so just to quickly mention a bit about the pronators and supinators you've got two supinators you've got the biceps which um, attaches to the radial tuberosity and you've got the supinator muscle at the back which originates on the ulna and it wraps around the t um, proximal radius so you've got two supinators the biceps brachii and the supinator and you've got two pronators you've got the pronator teres proximally and the pronator quadratus distally and these obviously pronate the forearm so that's the radius and ulna